Robots do not currently convey behaviors that allow them to seamlessly initiate interactions with humans. This is due to the complex and subconscious rules that humans believe must be followed in order for an interaction with a social player to be natural and appropriate. This project approaches the problem by creating a model for robots to greet humans in a socially appropriate manner. It builds off the work done by Edward Hall and Adam Kendon, who described interpersonal spacing and human greetings, respectively. In a typical greeting, two people will start by acknowledging each other through mutual eye contact. Then, either one or both of them will engage in a distant salutation. Kendon identified a number of these. The one which was implemented in the final solution was the wave, but more subtle distant salutations also exist, like the head toss or the head nod. The two people then move towards each other through social space, a process Kendon labeled as the approach. Specific behaviors are observed during the approach. Most interestingly is the fact that eye contact is rarely maintained. Once they enter personal space, they perform a close salutation, usually verbal, although a hug or handshake is appropriate in some situations. At this point, the greeters tend to adopt an open stance as they engage in conversation. The robot shows typical idle behavior, shifting its weight and looking around the room when nobody is in its public space. When a person enters the robot's public space, it will attempt to create mutual eye contact. If the human does not return eye contact, the robot will attempt to get their attention by vocalizing. Here we see a close-up view of the robot attempting to catch the human's eye. While it does this, it will attempt to stay in their public space. The robot then engages in a typical distant salutation. For this project, the most obvious body motion, the wave, was chosen, because more subtle motions were not perceived by others as social cues when coming from the robot. After the distant salutation, the robot will move towards the person through their social space, in what's called the approach. In this phase, the robot explicitly avoids eye contact, similar to observed human behavior. This is done to avoid the perception of staring and hopefully minimizes the uncanny valley phenomenon. As the robot enters the human's personal space, it performs a close salutation. In this project, the close salutation is a simple vocalization to avoid physical contact between the robot and the human. The robot makes eye contact again in this stage in accordance with behavior observed in humans. The system tracks the orientation and location of the human and robot using a Vicon motion capture system. Infrared cameras mounted on the roof provide constant feedback to the program. The robot uses a state machine architecture to dictate its behavior. This has been effective in simulating social behavior, but leads to overly simple and predictable behavior when the interaction is repeated many times. At each point, the robot attempts to maintain appropriate spacing in accordance with Hall's proxemics. The speed at which the robot moves depends on how far he perceives himself to be from the most appropriate spacing. This means that he slows down before stopping and will shift his weight subtly for small compensations. The intent is that this appears socially appropriate and normal. When the robot moves its head to the point where its neck is strained, it will adjust its body accordingly. Eye contact is dictated only by head position, since there is no hardware control over the direction of the eyes. In practice, this was effective in creating the perception of eye contact, or lack thereof, although it did make some interactions ineffective. The head toss and head nod, for example. These distance greetings observed in humans could not be effectively reproduced using the robot. This may be due to the lack of interdependence between head position and gaze in the robot that humans possess. The significant difference in size also likely contributes to different perceptions of appropriate social spacing. More work should be done to study the effects of this. For this project, Hall's original measurements were reduced considerably to compensate for a smaller social entity being a part of the interaction.